I get asked all the time about my botched experience, and I know this episode is long overdue, so welcome back to Beyond Skin Deep. Today, I'm going to be giving you the full inside scoop on what it was like to be on Botched Season 8. My episode is number 16, and it's called Med Spa Mayhem. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Oh my gosh, Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> has my episode. So my episode is actually called Med Spa Drama. It's episode 16. And I get a lot of people who search Beatriz Ama from Botched or whatever, and they find my stuff and they have a bunch of the same questions. And so I figured in this episode, I would just kind of run through the most frequently asked questions. And again, just give you like an inside scoop on what it was like and how it even happened for me and how it unfolded, because it really is such a cool story. And I love storytelling. So I'm going to walk you guys through it. Grab your popcorn. So it's summer of 2021. I'm in the hospital and in the hospital bed, you have this little pull out TV that you can, it's like stretched out on an arm, kind of like what they have at a dentist. And so I would put the pull out TV right in front of my hospital table that went across my bed. And I would just be sitting in my hospital bed and TLC would play all the botched episodes and also my 500 pound life or whatever that's called. But um, I would watch a lot of Botched in the hospital. It was the only thing that made me feel better about my situation and what I was going through. And I remember just feeling so emotional and also so thankful still somehow, despite what I was going through, whenever I learned about other people's stories of suffering and the way that the doctors were able to help them, it gave me a lot of hope. And I just think it's really interesting forecasting and foreshadowing of my life because if it wasn't for the hospital TV showing botched, I don't think that it would have ever been a thought in my mind to ever apply for botched. Do you know what I'm saying? So fast forward, what, like two years later, I finally am coming off of uh, treatment for the first time and um, transitioning to oral medications. And so in my head, of course, I'm thinking that I'm done fighting and that, you know, I am going to be able to do some like reconstructive procedures on, on my body and my scars. So one day I wake up and I just have this urge, you know, follow your heart's desires, right? I have this urge to just apply. And so I whip out my laptop and I search botched applications and I found the link to apply to be on botched. I submitted my story and I remember thinking like, they're probably not even going to see my submission, but I just prayed about it. And I was like, okay, well, if it's meant to be, I mean, like it'll happen. If not, like my mindset was like, life kind of still sucks anyways. Like I'm still covered in scars. If it happens, great. If it doesn't, I mean, like I'm still screwed anyways. So like, of course, like I really, really wanted it to happen. And to be honest with you guys, like deep inside, I just kind of had this like feeling or knowingness as if like it was already mine, as if it had already happened. And again, I think that's just because of some of the foreshadowing that I had experienced while I was in the hospital and while I was on treatment. And Heidi, the coworker that saved my life, would always joke about me being on TV and being on a show like Botched. And so because she would kind of like also like hint and joke about it, I just had a feeling like something like this was supposed to happen. And I also wanted to get awareness out on what happened to me so that it doesn't happen to other people. So anyways, I submit my application to botched and then I don't hear anything for like a month probably. And then I get a phone call from the production team and they want to set up an initial interview for me. (laughs) I set up the initial interview and I had no idea what to wear, but I knew after doing my research, I Googled a little bit that they like bright colors. That's just a thing about production. Like if you're ever applying for a TV show or going to be on an interview, wear a bright color, it makes you more memorable. And so of course, you know, I don't really have anything bright in my closet because usually when you're sad and insecure for several years straight, you kind of take colors out of your closet. And I remember I had one orange silk dress. And so I put on this orange silk dress for the interview. And then I like tuck a white skirt around it. So it looks like I'm wearing something colorful, but it was just such a goofy outfit, but luckily it was on zoom. So, you know, they weren't going to see waist down what I was wearing irrelevant details, but I just think it's funny. So I'm doing the interview Zoom call with the production team, and this is like the baseline interview, like if they even want to take you on next steps um, of, of the process of casting. 
I remember not being able to talk about my story. I did not realize how bad I was at talking about my story until that interview because I just trauma dumped a little bit. I was bawling. It was raw and I am not a faker. Like if I, if I wear my feelings on my sleeve, if I feel something it's there. And I just realized how little practice I actually had in trying to explain the timeline of my story and what happened. And obviously that's important for the show. I don't think I did a very good job. However, you know, I have a motto that I really like and it's my honesty. It brings me everything I deserve. And so I think because I was honest and I was raw with my emotions, it may have worked for my benefit. Around two weeks later, I get another call. They ask me some questions about the lawsuit that I was going through with the spa that uh, did this to me. And I was like, look, the lawsuit's not going anywhere. Like I'm not going to collect anything. It's, it's like a dud lawsuit. That's just, it happens in situations like mine. Rarely is anyone able to sue. And so I explained to them over and over like, Hey, like it's, there's not going to be any conflict with the fact that I'm in a, a lawsuit. That's just really not going anywhere. We just have to see it through because it's the right thing to do. Like they have no money and I'm not going to receive any money from the lawsuit. And I can't get in trouble for going on botched and spreading awareness on what happened as long as I'm not naming and defaming. So they took that information. They're like, okay, we're going to ask production about it. And at this point I start to realize like, oh, I, I'm actually seriously being considered. And then a couple days later, I'm at the gym and I'm working out and I get a phone call and they tell me, I'm sorry, but we just can't take on your case because of your pending lawsuit. There's just too many risks involved and it's just not going to work. And I was very heartbroken. I was so sad about it, but I just didn't believe it. I was like, you know what? I just have a feeling that this is meant for me. And so I remember doing a prayer and I asked God to not let them forget about me. I asked God to have my story playing in the back of their heads over and over so that they could just feel this yearning to reconsider. A couple days later, I sent a follow-up email again saying, hey, like this opportunity would be life-changing for me. And I really hope that you guys can reconsider. And then a couple days later, I got the phone call. They had reconsidered. And I remember signing a bunch of like DocuSign agreements and the production company sent everything over to me. And once I signed, like I was locked in, it was good. All that to say that if you have a weird little feeling that you should probably do something one morning whenever you wake up randomly and sign up for some program, like maybe you should do it because that's how it ended up working out for me. And the story just gets better. So the way that it worked on filming days is they would actually call me a lift in the morning. They told me, hey, don't worry about hair or makeup. We have a makeup artist and hairstylist here for you. So I would get in my lift in the morning to get to set, which was in Burbank, which is actually where this med spa ruined my life. But anyways, trauma. Um, (laughs) But yeah, so I would go to Burbank in the morning and it was so cool. I remember walking into the trailer for the first time and I was like, wow. I could be on reality TV like for the rest of my life. Like I felt like I belonged there. I was like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest moment. I absolutely loved like walking into this huge room and there was this giant green screen and all these cameras and cables. And I mean, it was like nothing I had ever seen before. It was such an experience. It was really, really cool. And I had a production representative that was specific to my case. And so that person basically made sure that schedule went according to plan. And they did an amazing job at working very one-on-one with me so that I always felt comfortable because obviously you're talking about like a vulnerable and traumatic thing. And like, you know, this is very sensitive. So like at all times they were making sure that I felt good and I felt comfortable. The thing that I like most is that whenever you're filming the green screen shots, which is like whenever I'm answering certain questions or telling certain pieces of my story, it actually goes like this. You have your 
production partner, like your production representative sitting across from you, having a very genuine conversation with you. And then you have a bunch of camera people in the back, but it's really dark. So you can't really see them. So it feels like you just have a really nice one-on-one conversation with your person and everyone else is in the background. And sometimes they'll interrupt and be like, Oh, can you blot her forehead or, you know, fix this side of her hair? And they want things to be high quality, but for the most part, you just kind of feel locked in, in that conversation. And it makes telling the story a lot easier. And they just ask that you answer the questions in in full sentences. So whenever they would ask, like, how does this make you feel? I would say my scars make me feel like X, Y, Z. And so they just really guide you through the process so that it's easy. Everything is kind of just given to you in a blueprint that like already works. And I just loved it. It was great. I have zero complaints. I loved every single part of filming If there's a reality TV show out there right now that wants me, I will do it. (laughs) No, just kidding. It depends. The next question is, were the doctors as nice in person as they seem on TV? Yes. Honestly, you don't get a whole lot of interaction with the doctors, but you do meet them before you start filming. So pre-filming or pre-production, you have to do a psychological evaluation to make sure that you know, you're of sane mind to be recording a show like this. They do have a specific psychologist that they use. So you go through this interview with her and then you have to go to, um, another like a uh, general health practitioner. Then once she does like a general health assessment on you, you're good to go and meet the doctors in person, but not on camera. I remember being in the office and they came in and off the bat, they were so like sympathetic I remember being a little girl watching, I think it was called The Ugly Swan or something, and Dr. Dubrow was the plastic surgeon on that show. And so I have known of Dr. Dubrow since I was like 11 years old. Dr. Nassif is amazing, but I was just kind of more fangirling a little bit over Dr. Dubrow. And I mean, his, his face and the emotion in his face and both of their concern when they were looking at my body and looking at my scars and feeling for my patient history and like what I had gone through made it feel like a really, like a really good doctor's appointment. I appreciated all the things that they had to say. They were so kind. And I remember right before Dr. Debro shut the door to leave the exam room, he goes, these people need to be in jail. And that just made me feel so seen. So yeah, The time that I really got one-on-one with the doctors off camera was awesome. And then on camera, I think I was a little bit more nervous just because like you have, you know, two people with big cameras in the room and it's a quite a small room actually. And you're trying to focus on this conversation with the doctors. You want to, you know, have good posture and look good on TV and you know that things are being filmed. And so you kind of just have a little bit more going through your mind and then you don't want to sound stupid and say the wrong thing. So of course I had like all those feelings, which is totally normal. This is part two of my botched behind the scenes vlog. You don't see it on camera, but I'm actually shaking every single time I talk to the doctors because I'm such a huge fan. I remember I was so nervous. I was like just shaking the whole time while having a conversation (laughs) with them. But for the most part, like it was, it was great. Let's see, what's the next question? What exactly did I have done? Okay, so here's the thing. Botched is amazing for this because I started filming in January of 2023 with the doctors. I could not be on antibiotics, not through the port at least, if I was going to be on the show because you cannot do certain procedures while you're on treatment. And so this caused some complications. I was on oral antibiotics because I had just entered remission from being on the IV medications and and we were just kind of like tapering off because we thought that the mycobacterium was done. So because of that, in the beginning, we were not able to do any like overly invasive procedure. So that includes like surgery and then any invasive like needle or laser just would not work on my skin. 
Because of that limitation, our only option in the beginning is a laser called broadband light, or they call it BBL, not a Brazilian butt lift BBL laser. (laughs) So we started off with passes of BBL laser on my body, and we just wanted to see how my skin reacted to it. And if we were seeing uh, positive results after the initial like two or three treatments. And then once I came off of the antibiotics fully, we were able to add in moxie laser so then we would do a full round of bbl laser on about like level 19 which is quite high and then we would do a pass over with the moxie laser was it painful yes it was bbl was not as painful as moxie but i personally was not able to use any kind of numbing cream and it's really not recommended because in my case it can cause a little bit more redness to the skin the the numbing cream can And if the skin is red, then the laser is not going to be able to do a good job at noticing the the scars that it wants to change the pigment of. So it was just better to do it without any numbing. I think at this point in time, like I was used to pain and I have kind of like a mindset practice when I know I'm going to go into a painful situation. And I, I have really embraced the fact that like pain is temporary. And so whenever I'm going through something painful, I'm just like, okay, like this is going to disappear in an hour or two hours, and then I'm going to feel fine. And, and, and it's, okay. And so after each treatment, it would, you know, burn for like two, three hours, like very hot as if I had like touched a stove or something. That's kind of what it felt like on my skin, just kind of like raw. And then it would feel better. We would put ice packs and uh, lotion on my skin after all the treatments. And mind you, I'm getting my arms, my stomach and my back done for this because I have, you know, scars in about half my body. Then the following day, what would happen to the skin is you would see like all these little brown dots starting to form like around the scar. And then the brown spots a few days later would like flake off and I would notice that my scar would be lighter. And so it was a really cool process because I saw little micro results after every single treatment that I had done. And in total, I had about eight treatments done and you can only get those treatments like every four weeks. So we would try to do once a month. I would go in on a Friday and then the nurse, Laura, was the best. We developed an amazing relationship with one another. It was like, you know, that feeling when you go into your hair girl or your nail girl and and there's just like this there's this energy and it's fun and you miss each other and you love catching up on life. Like that's what it was like every single Friday that I went in to go see her. And despite how painful the treatment may have been, I was always distracted by like just us laughing and giggling and how kind she was. And now I'm getting emotional. I get emotional because Laura did such an amazing job planning out the laser protocol. She worked super closely with me. I would send her pictures after my appointments. Like it was just amazing. And she just did such a great job. Like during my appointments, like reminding me, like, you're still so beautiful. Your body looks great. You know, it's not going to be perfect, but I was just like, so happy to see my scars turn from dark brown and dark purple to a lighter pink color. For me, it was everything. Like in the show, I remember saying like, oh, I love wearing white, but I never get to wear white clothing because you can see my dark purple and brown scars through the white clothing. And then I remember like, towards the end of, of treatments, like when my scars got to lighten a little bit, I was able to wear white. I was able to wear some more see-through clothing, especially in the hot summertime. And like, I don't think that I would be where I am today in this whole like body positivity and, um, accepting my new body and my scars. If it wasn't for the lightning treatments that I received with botched, I just wouldn't, if I still looked how I did back then, I would probably still act how I did back then. And that's sad and depressed and and hopeless. Every single month I noticed like this progress in my attitude and my positivity and my own acceptance towards myself and my body that has changed so much. And I don't think that I would have ever started taking social media more seriously if it wasn't for that confidence and for that hope. And so it was like, All these things were coming together at once thanks to these treatments. And I know that to an extent, like obviously this is vanity related, but when you look good, you feel good. And for the first time in two and a half years, I felt good in my body and it was 
just transformational. It was amazing. It was, it was so good. Okay. What's my next question? So basically the question is asking, is there anything that you wish would have been filmed that wasn't, um, included on your episode? And in a way, yes. So I just think that my scars looked so much better, like two months after I did my, uh, after shot on the round table green screen. And I wish that people who watched the episode could see like how much progress there was after even all of that. But that's why I post, you know, what I post on social media and I kind of do some of the the transformation and the progress that way. However, because my disease came back in September, oh, my remission period was so short and I had to go into multiple surgeries, September, October, November, and then February of this year, 2024, I have a lot more scars. And so it's a little frustrating for me to look at my body sometimes because I'm like, ugh, I had all my scars treated. And then now we have like these random, like dark line scars in certain areas of my body. And I mean, at this point, my mindset is like, look, I'm already covered in scars anyways. Like what's a new one really going to do? Like it's all, it's all crazy regardless. So I don't like that. I have the new surgery scars, but I have surgery in three days. So I'll have a couple more. Oh, and also the last detail that I wanted to include was that my episode on Botched left on a continuation note, meaning that they wanted to bring me back for more. However, uh, they said that they wanted to go in in the next season and do a skin only tummy tuck, which I would love, but I have some concerns. One is I want nothing more in the world than to be a mother. And so if I have a skin only tummy tuck, is my baby going to have a hard time growing? I don't know. It's just a thought that I think about. And then two, like I get nervous because I don't know if I have enough skin. I mean, I've gotten looked at by several surgeons actually that say I do have enough skin for a skin only tummy tuck. I just don't want my belly button to look weird. I've seen a lot of bad tummy tucks. I've seen a lot of bad work. And I know that Dr. Debro and Dr. Nassif are the best, but at the same time, of course I still get worried. You know, I just wouldn't want my body or my figure to look worse trying to fix something that's already bad. And so I have some reservations regarding that. Also like a skin only tummy tuck would be nice because then you can get rid of the the area of my body that has the most scars in the smallest area. However, I still have the ones on my side and on my arms. So while a tummy tuck is going to be great, it's just not going to fix the whole issue. And ideally what I really truly want is I want all of my scars to kind of like if I have a circle scar right here, Okay. And I cut around the circle scar and I sew up the skin and create a line scar. I would love that. I would take a hundred line scars over a hundred circle scars that look scary any day. And so that's kind of what I would really like for my future surgery wise or reconstructive plastic surgery wise. I just like still get so self-conscious about my scars because they are circular, because they look like a flesh eating bacteria was there because they look like, you know, monkey pox. And of course I have the words of that terrible plastic surgeon before that told me that I would never be able to wear a bikini because I would always scare people and stuff like that. And it's like, I think a bunch of line scars and a bunch of circle scars just like say different things. And it would just make me feel a lot better. Like Either way, I know that I'm not going to be able to get like a a skin transplant or some like silk clean canvas ever again. I know that's just not in the cards for me. And they did a really good job at explaining that like, hey, we're working the best that we can, but like there's no way for us to like completely give you, you know, skin that didn't go through what it went through. And that's just the truth. (laughs) And it always cracks me up because people all the time say say this thinking that it's going to make me feel better. They're like, oh, well, like eventually the scars are going to disappear. Like they're going to fade. And it's like, it's a little different whenever it was a a flesh eating bacteria, because there's a lot more pigmentation that goes into it. Like even my surgery scars pigment worse because it was a bacteria that was in my skin. And now that we know that I do have active mycobacterium in my body, it makes it difficult to have me on as a continuing candidate. But at this point, I'm like, look, 
the answer for curing me once and for all is not antibiotics. The antibiotics are not going to be able to penetrate, um, beyond the point that they have at this point, we just need to go in and we need to remove as much of the granulomas and the bacteria that we possibly can. And the number one way to do that is by removing the flesh and the skin that was infected. So, you know, in my opinion, I think it's a smart idea medically to remove the skin that was affected by the bacteria. So anyways, I hope that answers all your questions in regards to my experience on botched. I would do it a million times over. I think it has been one of the most amazing and memorable experiences that I have had in my life. And it's just awesome that I will always be able to turn on the TV and and watch that episode and remember it. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that things happened the way that they did. I couldn't imagine where I would be today in my life if it wasn't for this opportunity. So a huge thanks to everybody that was involved in making that possible. That is all for today's episode. If you have any other questions that maybe I failed to answer, drop it in the comments and I will respond to you. And again, thank you so much for supporting Beyond Skin Deep. I feel the love and the support and I hope that you guys also feel through the camera, my appreciation for you guys, because I don't really have words to explain how, how thankful I am specifically because it feels as if I have like a team or like an army of people who are also fighting this with me and who are on my side throughout this entire journey. And and that's just so cool. So thank you guys again. Thank you for supporting beyond skin deep. And I will see you on the next episode. We're done French.